up you guys welcome back to another one if you are new to the channel I am Gold Pony I do new car truck SUV reviews on YouTube and today we are in the new 2020 Toyota Land Cruiser courtesy of Younger Toyota in Hagerstown Maryland for more information on their inventory please feel free to check out the link in the description box below and so I'm in this one today because this SUV is truly a legend it is legendary off-road status it's been that way for over 60 years now actually legendary reliability consumer reports will back that up I'm sure if you just check out a consumer reports magazine there and my Japanese teacher in college absolutely swears by these things so with all that being said I figured I had to check one out today so what do you guys say let's just go ahead and jump right into it and as always let's start with pricing and so MSRP for the 2020 Land Cruiser we'll start at $85,415. Heritage Edition being the one we have today is going to start at $87,745. And by the way, that Heritage Edition trim level is a new trim for the 2020 model year. But regardless of trim level that you go with, power plant is going to be the same. Powering this beast is a 5.7 liter naturally aspirated V8, putting out 381 horsepower at 5,600 RPM, 401 pound-feet of torque available at 3,600 RPM, power sent to all four wheels through Toyota's full-time four-wheel drive system, sent to the ground through an eight-speed automatic, zero to 60 time, approximately 6.7 seconds, which is kind of impressive considering the size of this SUV. We will test out that acceleration in a little bit here, but MPG numbers 13 in the city, 17 on the highway. Taking regular unleaded fuel though, but still, as expected, miles per gallon are not gonna be the very best. And so, but now having said all that, what do you guys say? Let's go ahead and find a straightaway. We'll put that zero to 60 time to the test here and let's do a quick little acceleration. And let's see how quickly we can get the new 2020 Toyota Land Cruiser here up to speed. All right, here's our straightaway in three, two, one. Wow, more than I expected definitely pushes you back into the seat and that's as expected i guess for a v8 but still the size of the land cruiser still plenty of acceleration that is what i'm trying to say that was actually a lot more acceleration than i expected in this thing but to go along with that acceleration as always braking is equally important and so up front you will find 13.97 inch ventilated front disc to be exact in the back 13.58 inch solid rear disc as far as the 60 to 0 stopping distance goes on the Land Cruiser 121 feet which is actually quite impressive considering the size of this beast a lot of larger SUVs will come in in the upper 120s even the 130s so 121 is perfectly fine for this thing so no issues there whatsoever as far as the braking feel goes i even muttered it to myself in my test drive already braking feel is absolutely amazing actually it immediately brings you to a stop in the lane cruiser which is nice considering again the size of this beast but so then touching on suspension and handling a little bit up front you're going to get an independent double wishbone front suspension in the back four link rear suspension front and rear stabilizer bars and a Torsen limited slip center differential with the locking feature. This I love because essentially what that Torsen differential does is on pavement, it's unlocked and it can send torque up to 40% to the front, 60% to the rear. And of course, if you decided to go off-roading, you could put the Land Cruiser in low range and it'll automatically lock that for you as well. So definitely a nice off-roading feature there. In addition to that, the Land Cruiser also comes with crawl control, which I again, certainly appreciate. This is essentially a low speed cruise control that works of course uphill or downhill what i particularly have used it for in the past is on the beach you take the land cruiser on the sand and again it's going to be very capable in the sand like for instance acetic island in maryland here if you want to drive alongside the horses crawl control is going to be your friend that torsen differential is also going to be your friend so between those two and lastly the kinematic dynamic suspension system or what toyota calls kdss that is going to give you the ability to disengage the stabilizer bars allowing independent movement and so that feature is going to be especially good if you knew you're going to be going over a rocky terrain or uneven surfaces essentially that's definitely going to give you more off-road capabilities as well there and by the way that's going to automatically sense when you're going off-road as well it's going to automatically kick in and then it'll just re-engage the stabilizer bars once again once you actually get back on road that is going to be a wonderful off-road feature as well as far as ride quality goes it's pretty much as expected this does ride on a truck platform that's perfectly fine for what it is i certainly have no issues steering feel is 100 percent on the weightier side without a doubt that might be the first thing i noticed when i got in this thing definitely a very heavily weighted steering feel which is a good thing in my opinion i like the heavier weighted steering feels personally the one thing the one constructive criticism when it comes to performance we're about to hit it 
there it is. Because of this roof rack, you get so much cabin noise coming in through the moon roof. You get this howling and a little bit of rattling. And again, that's because of the roof rack that comes specifically with the Heritage Edition. Under 50 miles per hour, you can't even notice it, but once you hit 50 miles per hour, you can definitely notice the cabin noise without a doubt. And so when it comes to that cabin noise, I wanted to take a further look into this, why there was so much cabin noise, because it was definitely well more than I was used to. And so what I found when I actually pulled it into the bay where I was going to do my exterior shots here was that the front shield to that roof rack had actually fallen down, perhaps when they took it through the car wash for me. So therefore, if I were to have stopped on the side of the road, push that back up, I'm sure the cabin noise would have completely dissipated. So I'm going to put a picture up here on the video so you guys can actually see what it's supposed to look like and clearly see it did fall down. That was the issue with the cabin noise. So I did just want to mention that to you guys. The cabin noise is not going to be that bad if that was actually installed the way it was supposed to be. But so then anyways, touching on visibility, there is a massive rear window back there. We'll say those second row headrests are kind of beefy, but you could always remove them if you wanted to. And without them, visibility is going to be 100% on point because again, that rear window is absolutely massive. So no issues for me there. Rain sensing windshield wipers also coming standard and a windshield wiper to icer actually as well. All of those factors contributing to visibility. And just one extra thing I wanted to touch on visibility with this one. I love the hood creases. Looking forward out the windshield, you can't help but notice these massive hood creases, which look absolutely amazing in my opinion. Definitely makes you feel like you were driving a beast of a vehicle. So absolutely love that. Wanted to mention that. But that about rounds out the performance segment of this review, you guys. Let's now go ahead and take a look at the exterior of this brand new 2020 Toyota Land Cruiser. And so here she is, you guys, the new 2020 Toyota Land Cruiser finished in midnight black metallic. In case anybody was curious about the color name, let's go ahead and start up front. Up front, you are going to find that the grille is going to differ slightly between your standard Land Cruiser and the Heritage Edition Land Cruiser. For instance, for the standard, you're gonna find a slightly thicker tri-bar front grille, a little more black accents with the Heritage Edition as well. So it is gonna differ slightly up there. To the sides, full LED headlights come standard either way, and they do come of course with the automatic feature meaning when it starts to get dark out at night they will turn on automatically for you there led daytime running lights also standard up front again dark housings for those headlights if you go with the heritage edition otherwise you're going to have clear housings and you will find the land cruiser logo within those housings as well did find that pretty cool actually too but LED fog lights just below coming standard either way. And if anybody was curious about the ground clearance that comes in at 8.9 inches as far as approach and departure angles, they're actually gonna be the same when you compare the standard Land Cruiser to the Heritage Edition. Both of them coming into the 32 degree approach angle, 24 degree departure angle. And you will find a front tow hook up there actually as well. Did wanna also mention skid plates are going to come standard either way, covering the front suspension, the radiator, fuel tank, and transfer cable as well. So again, legendary off-roader, of course, it makes sense that the Land Cruiser comes with skid plates. Now let's go ahead and make our way to the side. Black roof rails come standard. However, with the Heritage Edition, you'll find that Yakima Mega Warrior roof rack. Also zooming out a little bit, chrome belt line molding does come standard. Rear privacy glass also standard. Aluminum running boards come standard as well. Did want to mention those running boards are deleted with the Heritage Edition, so therefore we do not actually have them today. Heritage Edition trim is not going to give you running boards. Of course, you could add them on if you wanted to, but it's not going to come standard with it. Front and rear mug guards also standard across the board. And you will find some chrome cladding across the bottom portion of the side skirts there if you go with the standard setup. It's not going to come with the Heritage Edition. But so perhaps one of my favorite parts about the side of the Land Cruiser is the Land Cruiser Heritage Badge towards the back. Obviously, that's just going to come with the Heritage Edition, but that kind of pays tribute to the old Land Cruisers back in the 80s and even before that actually as well. Again, the Land Cruiser has been around for over 60 years now, so that's kind of a throwback emblem there, which I actually absolutely love. And again, that's just for the Heritage Edition. Taking a look at the side mirrors, they are body colored power adjustable heated side mirrors with integrated turn signals as well. Love that. Taking a look down at the wheel setup, 18 inch double five spoke alloys are going to come standard. 18 inch bronze BBS forged aluminum alloys is what you were looking at right now. And that is going to come, of course, with the Heritage Edition. That is an awesome look, especially on this black color that we have here today. Love that. Make your way to the back though. Rear spoiler with the integrated brake light comes standard rear window wiper just below that. You have some Land Cruiser lettering spelled out horizontal got the v8 badging back there as well led taillights coming standard as expected to this price point of course and a rear tow hook back there as well and by the way
way, the integrated tow hitch comes with four and seven pin connectors. Towing capacity comes in at 8,100 pounds in case you planned on doing any towing in the Land Cruiser. And just behind it all, you do have a single exhaust outlet. So I do believe you guys know what we have to do next. As always, here is that exhaust clip. now since we are round back when it comes to opening that rear lift gate it is a power lift gate cool part about this lift gate is it not only opens up from the top as expected but also from the bottom and of course toyota and a bunch of other suvs actually do this so that if you have something that you don't want spilling out you can also fold down then when you're ready to essentially but that is how you're going to open that one up behind the third row and by the way the third row is going to come with the standard configuration heritage edition deletes that third row but you do get three rows of seats if you go with the standard setup did want to mention that but behind the third row 16.1 cubic feet you go with that standard trim level behind the second row either way 53.5 cubic feet and that's what you're looking at right now and with that rear seat folded down 82.8 cubic feet so that's with all rows folded either way and again the heritage edition only comes with two rows standard configuration comes with three so also in that cargo area though you will find a cargo area cover as well as a 120 volt power outlet to charge up tools or perhaps whatever else you wanted to charge up back there but I do want to mention that's going to be there for you too so plenty of space back there quite honestly but then if you were to go with that standard configuration third row legroom comes in at 28.3 inches so although we don't have it today I will say 28.3 inches is less actually than the rear seats of my Ford Mustang GT which is 29 inches so essentially what that means is the third row is really unusable with the exception of maybe car seats or very small children something like that so you can use it for that i suppose but that third row will get some cup holders then if you were to go with that configuration as well make our way to the second row which i can actually show you guys here 34.4 inches of rear legroom that is for reference i mean even six feet tall this is how much space i had back there Heated second row seats also come standard. Absolutely love that, especially at this price point, but always nice to spoil the rear passengers a little bit. Rear center armrest with cup holders coming standard. You do have rear ventilation back there as well. Front seat back map pockets nobody actually uses maps anymore four zone climate control coming standard as well and you do have some wood trim surrounding the controls too again a little bit of a throwback there but absolutely love that as well 12 volt power outlet back there too overall when it comes to me plenty of space for those second row passengers quite honestly then make our way to the front seats 10-way power adjustable driver's seat with power lumbar front seats will come heated and ventilated that is the standard setup regardless of trim level that you go with leather trim seating again coming standard eight-way power adjustable passenger seat coming standard although heritage edition is going to give you a five-way power adjustable passenger seat as opposed to the standard setup giving you eight-way power adjustable passenger seat so one to mention that ultimately the seats are perfectly comfy i can see no issues whatsoever going on long road trips in the land cruiser so seating is definitely on point take a look now at the steering wheel it is tilt and telescoping it is leather wrapped with wood grain accents on both the top and the bottom portions of that steering wheel again a throwback feature there and i absolutely love it makes it look very high end so that is pretty darn cool if you ask me but now let's go ahead and make our way to the startup let me start by showing you guys the key here you do have a land cruiser specific key actually which i absolutely love land cruiser lettering with tire marks on the one side and when you flip it over lock unlock button to pop the rear hatch of course and you got your toyota logo at the very bottom but love that you get a Land Cruiser specific key. That's so stinking cold, but it is a push button start across the board as expected this. So all I'm going to do is simply put my foot on the brake and press that engine start button located just to the left of the climate control information there. But once started up, tachometer is on your left, speedometer is on your right, and there is a digital display front and center, which can be controlled by using the steering wheel mounted controls on the right side there, giving you a ton of different things like when you need your next oil change, outside temperature, how many miles you have left until you hit empty, which you might find Find yourself looking at quite often in a vehicle like the Land Cruiser and plenty of other information as well actually but let's go ahead now and make our way to overall interior quality of the Land Cruiser. Power moonroof does come standard absolutely love that. Overhead sunglass holder also standard up there. Home link controls for up to three different garage doors found underneath the rear view mirror there it comes standard again. Wireless phone charger also coming standard. LED accent lighting love that as well and also a huge fan of all the wood grain 
Italian accents found on the doors just above the passenger side glove box and it certainly ties in well with the steering wheel as well and of course you have several compartments actually within that center armrest between the driver and passenger to a ton of space in there so absolutely love that but overall finish plenty nice for what the Land Cruiser is but now let's go ahead and take a look at the tech display front and center nine inch color touchscreen display coming standard and that includes Bluetooth and audio streaming no Android Auto and Apple car plan fortunately but honestly who really cares? It comes with factory navigation system. The only downside with the factory navigations is that you have to get them updated every now and then, and that costs a little bit of money. But at this price point, who really cares, right? <laughs> so you do a factory navigation system. You also have your radio information up there. And by the way, when it comes to the sound system, you will find a 14 speaker JBL sound system coming standard across the board. So I think you guys know what time it is now. Let's go ahead and turn this thing back on, see what we got playing on the radio today, and let's test out the clarity of this one. Plenty good sound system for the Land Cruiser, ton of bass, perfect clarity. Absolutely love that actually. That was well done here in the Land Cruiser. But so then last thing I'm gonna mention to you guys is when you do put the Land Cruiser in reverse, you of course will find a rear view camera along with a 360 degree monitor as well. That is pretty cool. That gives you an aerial view of what is all around you, not just behind you. But as always, that is going to lead us into safety. And so to start front side, side curtain airbags do come standard, driver and passenger knee airbags as well. There are also seat mounted second row side impact airbags. That's sometimes optional on like BMW and higher end vehicles. It almost never comes standard though. So I absolutely love that. In the back, you also have latch, AKA lower anchors and tethers for children for the rear car seats, rear child door locks, a tire pressure monitoring system, but also standard some of the more advanced safety features include a blind spot monitoring system with rear cross traffic alert, front and rear parking sensors, a pre-collision system with pedestrian detection, lane departure alert, automatic high beams, and dynamic radar cruise control as well. And so when it comes to my final thoughts here of the 2020 Land Cruiser, a bit pricey, but it's a legendary name. I will say that very special vehicle. It's been manufactured for over 60 years now. Definitely not something you see a ton of on the road. So if you're one of those people like myself that enjoy being different, this is definitely a vehicle you got to check out. Out. It's a legendary off-roader. All of the advanced safety features you could want. That's Toyota basically in a nutshell. Not the very most high resolution tech display, but I do like that it's large. It's nine inches, so that's good, but it's not the highest quality I've seen. No rear window sunshade, so that's also a slight bummer for me personally. But again, the reliability is absolutely legendary though. So although it has a V8, this thing is going to last an eternity because it is a Toyota, of course. So I love that too. But that is about it for this one, you guys. Thank you so much for watching. Feel free to follow me on social media at the bottom of the screen there. If you like, be sure to hit the subscribe and the bell notification button. And if you're into new car reviews, that is what we do here on this channel. After all, do appreciate you guys watching more than you know. And I will see you guys all in the next video. Stay gold.